Let's talk wedding flowers. Now the first thing I want you to do right now is just relax. Take a deep breath, get rid of all that stress and we're going to talk through everything you need to know. So first things first, I'm Gemma from Gems Floral Studio and I have owned a floristry business for seven years in Staffordshire. And I have done hundreds of wedding consultations, hundreds of wedding setups, so I know how stressful this can be. By now, you would have already known your colour scheme and what colour flowers that you want to have and your style of bouquets that you want to have. So, you've been looking at Pinterest, you've been looking online for any inspiration. Now, one thing that I need you to know is when you are looking at ideas on Pinterest for the most, these pictures have been heavily edited and your bouquet will not look exactly like that bouquet in the picture. So, just like other things, if you get my gist, there is not one bouquet that looks like another bouquet. We can use the same flowers, we can use the same colours, but your flowers will be individual to you. And one of the first things you need to know before you go crazy is what flowers you're having in your bridal party. So as you as the bride or the bride's mother, who, whoever is organising the flowers, how many bridesmaids? Are the mums having wrist corsages? Are they having buttonholes? Are they having a corsage for their bag? Then you need to know ceremony flowers. Are you having a top table? Are you having pew ends? Are you having entry pedestals? And then for the reception are you going to have any flowers for the entry reception the top table in there and any flowers in the middle of the tables as centerpieces so these are all the things that you've got to know before you go crazy on what you want of your flowers because you are going to need to budget you can't go to a florist and say right i want all these flowers like loads of bridal party loads of ceremony loads of reception but I only have £250 to spend. No, no, that is not going to work unless you just like want one flower. So I would say at least set aside in your budget for £1,000 to spend on flowers to make them look magnificent and have that wow factor. Otherwise, you are just going to have a standard wedding package. And also what you've got to bear in mind if you're having fresh flowers is what season you're getting married in. So if it's winter, spring, summer or autumn, all the flowers will be different, all the shades and colours will be different. So in the autumnal uh, season they go more of a dark colour and then in the summer they're bright, you can get peonies. And so if you're having like a winter wedding or an autumn wedding or even the beginning of spring, you cannot get peonies. Okay, so peonies are only available from May until the middle of August. And then if you want peonies, you're going to be hit with a massive charge because they have to be ordered directly from Holland or other countries that have flower farms. And they will put a massive mark upon there because they're not in season and they're hard to get at that time so it is possible to get them if you've got a big budget so please make sure that you know what your flowers are going to be like in the season and please discuss this with your florist and they will give you the best advice explaining what sort of flowers that you'd like if you're a novice in the flower world you don't know any names of the flowers the best thing to do is get those pictures and show your florist and they can tell you what flowers they can get, what flowers they can't get and what flowers they can use as an alternative. So there is always an alternative for what you will want. So do not worry about that. Florists can sometimes seem like they're speaking in a different language when it comes to flower names as well. So they can explain everything to you. So please do not worry. So I'm going to go through a few um, bouquet ideas, bridal bouquet ideas and the sort of themes. And I will put pictures in there. So when I'm describing it, you can then see what I mean. So there are, are so many different styles of bridal bouquets and arrangements such as structured, unstructured, 
boho, organic, got the cascading bosquet, bosquet, bouquet. We've got heart shaped. We've got dried and natural. We've got dried and fresh. And the list goes on. And how overwhelming is this to set a solid idea for what you want? So I am here to help. So the flowers that are going to be necessary for your wedding is obviously the bridal bouquet, any bridesmaids or flower girls, then the buttonholes, a top table for the ceremony that you can then utilise in the reception area as well. And then maybe some decorations for the centre tables also. So they are a must. Now, when I speak to brides, they forget about flowers or don't have an idea of what weddings usually have. So what I would say, please don't forget to get thank you bouquets as well. That's the main thing that my brides forget. And it's super duper easy. You can just tell your florist to make a couple of gift bouquets or four gift bouquets or whoever you want to say thank you to. Then when you have all these ideas in mind, I would then set up a consultation with a florist. And please do try and find one of the best florists in your area to do your flowers so that it's less stress. You can then have one-to-one -one meetings or Zoom meetings with your florist. She can talk through everything. She can budget everything that you want. And at the end, she can tell you how much that initial quote is going to be. You can then add and take away depending on your budget. And just like anything else, you get what you pay for. So if your florist says your bridal bouquet is £200 and somebody down the road is charging £50, there might actually be a reason for this. So please do check up on the florist skills before you make any decision because you don't want to get to the day and your flowers to be something completely different from what you bargained for. And I'm just being completely truthful on that. And just know the type of flowers you're having are going to determine the price of your bouquet. So I've got a few flowers here. So for a carnation, they are going to be a lot cheaper than a rose. So please take in mind that when you do go to see your florist, please discuss these options because you can actually make your quote a lot cheaper, but get the max flowers out of it. Another thing to do if you want to save money as well, you can utilise your flowers. So if you're having like six bridesmaids or three bridesmaids, you can then take those bridesmaids bouquets and use them as centrepieces. So if you just get a vase and put them in the middle of the tables, then you can then put the bouquets in the middle of that and they can be completely utilised. Because after the wedding ceremony, bridesmaids just put their bouquets down and they're just left and then that's a sort of waste for the rest of the day. Another thing you can do is move your top table from the ceremony to the reception top table, and then you can have two purposes for this. And even if you're having pew ends, you can find like tables in your reception area as well after you've had them in the ceremony, and you can decorate them with the room a bit like that, so it looks like there is more flowers in there, but you were making use of these arrangements twice. So it's just like getting one and get one through. And another tip that I sometimes tell my brides, if they ask me what happens to the flowers afterwards, I say, so if you have got like a table of 10, just put a little sticker on their place name uh, or of a random person on that table. So a random person gets a sticker on their place name and they won't even know what this means. And then at the end of the reception, you can then say the person that has a sticker on their name card can take away the table arrangement. And then your flowers won't go to waste. And that is another use of that arrangement. So if you're having the bridesmaids bouquets, they can hold them in the reception, um, the ceremony, sorry, then go over to the ceremony. So for the bridesmaids, for instance, they can actually be used three times, the bridesmaids bouquets. 
So they can be used in the ceremony by the bridesmaids, taken to the reception, used as centerpieces, and then given to somebody at the end to take away. Another thing you can do after your wedding is just get the flowers and just put them in a press and you can press them and you can make all different arrangements from there. Alternatively, there are people and professionals that can do this for you also. And then you can keep your bridal bouquet forever. Now, another question I get asked quite frequently is when will the flowers arrive and can I have them the night before? My answer for me personally is no, because I like the flowers to be absolutely perfect that I'm giving to you on the day. So maybe if there's any guard petals on the roses, I can take them off in the morning and make your white rose look perfect. And if you have them the night before, I would probably be absolutely stressing in case you don't use the water efficient, efficiently. Because I think what happens if the bride or the bridesmaid has taken their bouquet out and not put it back in the water. And there's arrangements that need to be in water, especially the buttonholes. So I always tell my brides that I will deliver their flowers to the venue or the bridal party flowers to wherever they're getting ready by 9 a.m. on the day. So I know that everything's there, everything is perfect and everything is there that is meant to be there. What I personally also like to do is take pictures as I'm making my bouquets and arrangements and send them to the bride if she wants to see them. So I know and I have complete 100% peace of mind that those flowers on her day are going to be perfect. Please listen to your florist's advice if she says that something is not going to look right. So there is times in the past where I've asked, been asked for example for a teal bouquet. Now you cannot naturally get teal flowers so they have to be sprayed and now I do not spray my flowers at all because I personally think they look tacky. So I'll just ring the bride and be like, look, I put these together and I'm really, really not happy with them. Not because of my work, because of the colour and how they look. So please bear this in mind when you're thinking of the colours that you want. Alternatively, what I say, so if they do want a teal sort of colour or an aqua colour, I will then get a real pale blue to sort of mimic this colour and then it just looks all beautiful throughout. Now the reason that they probably do want this teal colour or they want golds or, th or colours that flowers can't come in is because they want it to either match the bridesmaids or the grooms but I will make sure that all the flowers entwine in colours lovely and your florist will be able to do this for you. Now, if you did, still did want them sprayed, that is absolutely fine as well. And always make sure that the groom is involved as well. Even though they say they're not bothered and you can take care of all the flowers secretly, I really think they are. Because what groom wants a full pink wedding? I mean, some do, but it is an unpopular opinion. So please make sure that you are getting the groom and other people involved as well. And please bear in mind that some florists have a minimum spend. So please look through this and make sure you've done your research before you go to a consultation because the minimum spend might be £600 and you only have a budget of £200 and your time is wasted. So please bear that in mind before you book any consultations. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you do like it. And if you've got anything else that you need to know that I've missed off here, then please leave a comment in the box below. I do love replying to all your questions and all your comments. And I'll see you in the next video.